Hi guys. Today I'm going to walk you through how to create our bud vase arrangement. You should have picked up your take home kits. You're going to get a vase. All of yours will be plastic. I uh, ran out giving you guys them, so I just have this one uh, that's glass. Your take home kit should have several stems. This is leather leaf fern. Should have three different carnations. And then your filler either looks like mine, this is wax flower, or you could have baby's breath, which would be white, but very similar. Besides that today, you're gonna to need your bow making kit because we are going to include a bow in this arrangement. And then you'll need a pair of scissors to cut both your bow and also your floral supplies. With that, we're gonna get started first today with our outlook of what we're about to do on the board. So I've drawn our base so far, and then a reminder about our skill focuses. We're, with this arrangement, focusing on balance, both physical and visual, so I'll show you that. We're also focusing on proportion, making sure that we get our sizing correct, and then we are including the bow. So those are our three main skill focuses with this arrangement. To get started today, you're gonna to wanna to take your vase and fill it with water. Otherwise, especially because your vases are plastic, everything is gonna to be top heavy and make our physical balance go off from the get-go. So fill your vase up with water about three quarters, and preferably cold water. Once you're, you have that done, we're now ready to start arranging. We're gonna to start today with the leather leaf fern, and we're going to create our background by placing at least two if not three stems in the background, but by offsetting them slightly so that we don't have them all stacked against each other. The key is to set your tallest point first, and then it's like coloring within the lines. We wanna keep everything below that. So how do we know what our tallest line is? This has to do with proportion. So our tallest point is going to be no more than one and a half times the height of the base. So you don't need to necessarily get a ruler out, but you can visualize and maybe use your hand one and a half times, this will be my tallest point. So one and a half times would be my tallest point. I can go slightly shorter than that, but I do want to fill the space. We at least want to match the size of the base. All right, and then those stems will be placed inside the water. From here on out, we're gonna briefly pause and talk about water management, because water management is very important for making this both looking nice and also um, staying uh, good as long as possible. So it's very important to manage your water. As I create this arrangement, anything going into the water needs to be a single clean, naked stem. I don't want pollen attached or dirt. I don't want leaves attached. I want everything to be a naked stem into the water. If it's above the water, I wanna leave those extra leaves. So really quickly, if you look at your carnation, we've got all these little leaves coming down. If I were to place this in the water and this was where my water line was at, I'm gonna remove these leaves so that I just have a clean, naked stem. In the case of the fern, you'll notice that it does have some brown uh, pollen dust that comes off and that dirties the water immediately. So you're gonna wanna take a paper towel and, or just your hands and wipe these clean before going into the water, okay? The next part of water management is making it last. I'm going to replace the water every other day. So I'm literally going to eventually take my entire arrangement out, dump the water, clean the vase, and replace the water and put everything back. If I do that every other day, this arrangement, especially with these carnations, these last a long time, you could have a nice looking arrangement for over two weeks if you do it correctly, okay? The other thing is to remember that water evaporates. So you need to be able to adjust your water management um, practices depending on where you're putting this. If you live in a house or put this vase in a particular location that gets extreme warmth, fireplace, next to a heater, in the kitchen where the stove is cooking, you might have to replace your water every day. On the contrary, if you are putting this somewhere that is shaded and cool, 
and as you notice in two days, it hasn't really dropped that much and it doesn't look dirty, then you can decrease. All right, back to our arrangement. Now that we have our background, our next step is going to be placing our main flowers in our shape that we want. We have three carnations today, and we are going for a triangular shape, but not in a perfect pyramid. We want them offset. So I'm gonna place one slightly lower than my main point. I'm gonna go off to the center and I'm gonna go down a little bit lower. All of those stems naked under the water line and into the water. Our last piece of this arrangement today is our filler flower, which is our wax flower or baby's breath. You have one, maybe two stems of this and it's super important to piece these out into multiple pieces if I took this one stem and placed it in the vase, it's gonna be overpowering, plus I lose control about where I want this stuff at. And remember, this is a filler flower, uh, an accent rather, not the main flower. So in total, this already is as big as that. I don't wanna use it all, and I definitely wanna space it out and not have it all at the same page. So I can take my clippers, or I can even pull this apart, and I'm gonna make this in multiple so that I can vary the sizes and create a better space. Being our filler flower today, we're going to do two main placements with it. I do want to put a little bit between each of the carnations so that I really divide them out and keep them spaced so that I keep that shape but I also see them as separate beings instead of clustered together. So it's kind of a spacer between the carnations. The other thing that I'm going to do with our filler flower today is continue the color from our main flowers down to the edge of the vase. Depending on how low you put this flower or how much space you have between it, there might be a big empty gap between the top of the arrangement and where the lip of the vase is at. And all I'm seeing at that point is either green fern or it might even just be the stem. So it's very see-through and we don't want that. So I'm gonna place some at this lower level to connect the color from top to bottom. That way the arrangement looks like a whole piece and not just all the top and then nothing. To finish it off, the bow is super important to finish what we've created so far. So right now we have all this arrangement at the top. I've continued the color and then we just have base. So we wanna continue the color story down. So we're gonna make our bow and we're gonna insert it right at the lip of the base with tails hanging down to make this really come like a waterfall. This whole arrangement from top to bottom, we're seeing color on a green background, not random colored clusters with a lot of green background. Okay, does that make sense? I sure hope so. We want our tails to hang down as low as they can go without touching the tabletop that we've placed this on. So I could bring them slightly lower. If you really like tails, you could add multiple tails, but we don't wanna take over the arrangement. This is meant to also be like an accent flower. Our carnations really are the star of the show and they need to poof open and display. All right, with that, let me get started and show you really how this comes together. 